Hello, I'm Brian Carpenter from Rainbow Aviation Services. Today we're going to be talking about installation and removal of AeroQuip hose ends. This is a process that you're probably going to run across no matter what kind of aircraft that you're working on. So, today we have an AeroQuip hose end here, typically used in high pressure and in low medium pressure applications. It is a braided hose with a steel inner braid that's built inside. So this is a tough hose, it's going to take quite a bit to work with this thing. To start with, we're going to show the, install the actual removal of this hose end as though we were going to replace it onto a new hose. So we're going to place it in the vise. Don't over, over tighten it there, we don't want to crush the body. We're going to install this mandrel. Let's take a look at this mandrel for just a second. This mandrel is built to go on the inside and to provide a smooth transition for the rubber piece that's on the inside. So in order to be able to get this inner piece off here, we're going to tighten this down. And in this case here, it's going to take a 9 16 wrench because we're doing a number four hose installation. And once we get that tight, we're going to be able to just back out this inner sleeve in here. As this comes out, you can see it slowly threading itself out we can see what we've got here. If we look at the inside of this body that we're looking at right here, you can actually see the threads that are on the inside there. Those threads that we're looking at are aluminum threads. When we're installing this mandrel on the inside, this inner sleeve here, you can see that there's not very many threads that are actually in here. When we go to do the reinstallation, this is going to be a critical element to, to understand what's going on here. So, let's take this hose end off here now. We're going to turn it around in the vise, and this is a reverse thread. So if you go to install this thing, it's just going to be like we're tightening this in order to get that back out of there. And you can see the threads that are threaded onto the outer portion. So it is the, it is the inside and the outside of that body that are actually squeezing that rubber in place that holds that hose actually in, uh, from coming out. This type of hose here for a number hose, number four hose is very capable of holding up to 3,000 PSI. So proper installation is going to be critical to making sure that we can hold those kinds of pressures that we're talking about. So we need, we're going to simulate as though we've got a bad end on this hose and we're going to need to, or we've got a new hose that we're going to cut to length. One of the better procedures for actually doing uh, cutting is to actually use a cutoff wheel. We're going to take and we're going to put some tape around the end of this thing. And the main reason that we're actually installing tape on this is when we use a cutoff wheel, we don't want all those steel braids and the inner shards of, of rubber to get all scattered all over the place. So we're actually going to take, put on our safety goggles here, and we're going to just cut off just the section that we want to the right length of hose. <laughs> And we're just using a regular old cutoff wheel, an abrasive cutoff wheel. Works pretty good. Okay. Now when we're done with that, you can see what a nice clean installation we actually had here. We'll just remove the tape. And there's no fraying or anything like that. If you were to use a hacksaw in this application, you'd have yourself a real mess on your hands right here. So we've got that installed. What we're going to do next is we're going to reinstall this end fitting on here. And remember, it's a reverse thread. So we're going to put it on in reverse. Actually, probably the vise will help us in this application here. Let's go ahead and we'll screw it all the way in until it bottoms out. We actually want it to bottom out in there. And then we'll do a visual inspection once it's bottomed out, just looking down the end of this to make sure that it actually is bottomed out. Then we're going to want to rotate it the opposite direction a quarter of a turn. And that's going to back off that thread, that uh, rubber, just far enough that it's going to allow us some expansion in there when we go to install that mandrel once again. So we're going to put this back in the vise. We've got that properly installed. Before we do that, I almost forgot. Don't want to forget this part. When we do this installation, we want to put a piece of tape right on the end of this. And we're going to use that tape as a guide to make sure that that hose doesn't actually slip and come back out. Without 100% insertion in there, we're not going to be able to hold the pressure that um, we may need if it's a 3,000 PSI system. So we're going to install that. Once again, we've got our mandrel that's going to go back in there with the, the B-nut on the end here. We're going to lubricate that with 
typically whatever the lubricant is that we're going to use the hose for. If it's an oil hose, you're going to want to use that um, uh, oil, engine oil for that. If it's a hydraulic hose, you're typically going to lubricate it with the hydraulic fluid that you're using in your hydraulic system. Now, we showed you earlier about how there's almost no threads on the end of this. If you go to install this thing and you just try and let the threads pull it in there, it's going to strip the threads out of that body. So it takes a lot of pressure during the in initial installation of this. Every time that you twist, you should be pushing hard. You've got to really help that engage itself. Push and twist. Push and twist. And just keep on doing that until you see that thing is engaged almost half the way down the body. Now, I've been pushing so hard, I'm actually pushing it back on the vise here. I'm going to have to reposition here in just a second. Let's do that. But I've got it to engage now. I'm at least up to the point where I've got thread engagement. And I'm just going to keep on going in. I'll wear you out. These buggers are really tight. So when I engage this all the way, I'm going to bottom it out completely. On the larger size fittings, you may find that it's so tough that you're going to have to pull it out and re-lubricate those, that inner portion, once again. I'm going to go till I bottom out, and then I'm going to back it up a quarter turn. And the reason I back it up a quarter turn is so that when I'm done with this, it's on there pretty tight. When I'm done with this, that B nut is going to be able to spin. Just a little bit of clearance in there, but it's going to be able to spin. So we can see that we didn't have any slippage on our, on our hose here. So we'll wipe that thing off. Next step, eyeball down the hose. We're going to want to actually clean that out. We'll use a little bit of cleaner down the inside of that and an air hose to blow that out. Very important. Once we do that, we can sight down the inside of that hose to see if there's any um, foreign material in there. So we've got a new hose ready to install on our aircraft. So you now know how to go about doing an AeroQuip hose installation. So hope to see you out there flying. Good luck with your projects and get ready to go.